So hello everyone. Welcome to this uh, new video. So today we are continuing with the uh, module two network analysis solutions. Okay. So uh, now we'll, let's start with the first question of this uh, module. That is three A. Find the current I x. This current I x here in the circuit shown in the figure using superposition theorem. Okay. So now for this circuit we need to apply superposition theorem. So the first thing that consider two ampere source. Okay. So in order to solve for superposition theorems, uh, we whenever we have a multiple sources in a network, we need to consider only a one voltage source at a, one uh, one source at source at a time. Okay. In order to solve for superposition theorem. So here first consider the two ampere source and whenever there are uh, dependent sources in the network, we need to keep it as it is. Okay. Yeah. So first consider only a two ampere source in the network and this three volt source we need we should not consider that is whenever we need to neglect the voltage sources what we need to do is we need to short the circuit right and for current sources we need to open the circuit yeah so in this network we would be having only one current source along with one dependent current source that is dependent on the current i x 1 right now okay here we had i x right since we are considering only two amp source now we need to be considering i x 1 and now apply source transformation here uh, current source in parallel so converted into voltage source in series so this would be 14 volt 7 ohm and this is 15 ohm okay yeah this is 15 ohm here this is 15 here 7 ohm and 15 ohm these are in series again so it should be 22 ohm 14 volt and here uh, i equal to v by r so here we can see that this voltage source is in series with this resistance here right so converted into current source with parallel and along with that this 5 ohm resistance and this 4i x1 okay so here we can see that we uh, in this kind of networks for superposition theorem we cannot uh, touch this dependent source okay we need to keep this as it is but how we can eliminate this source that is we can uh, uh, write this current source along with this dependent source that is 4i x1 plus 0.63 uh, 6363 okay along with that 22 ohms and 5 ohm resistance keep it as it is now now we should apply the current division rule that is I x1 is equal to the dependent source into the resistance of other branch divided by the sum of total resistance that is 22 ohm plus 5 ohm 27 ohm so while like this we need to solve for I x1 we get the answer as 0 0.2295 but our goal is to find the current I x okay so but now we have found the value for I x1 by taking only the 2 ampere source now let's consider the 3 volt source alone so we had here 2 ampere source right that would be where that would not be there because whenever we are removing a current source we need to short them so we need to open them okay yeah so we have opened it and we have written all the other terms and here we can see that uh, these two are in series so this would be 22 okay so this is 22 right 15 plus 7 22 so i equal to b by r so it is 3 by 22 1 point 0.1363 amps so we had voltage source in series right we are converted into current source in parallel and again a dependent source we have 4i x2 this time okay since we are considering 3 volt source so now we cannot touch this dependent source so add uh, this 0.1363 along with this 4i x2 and write 22 ohm and 5 ohm and again use the current division rule for i x2 that is uh, this current source into the resistance of the other branch this is 22 okay resistance of other branch divided by the sum of total resistance that is 22 ohm plus 5 and now we are getting the answer for ix2 but our total current ix uh, in 5 ohm corresponds to ix1 plus ix2 okay so we have found the value for ix1 and ix2 then uh, uh, simplify that and we will get the value of ix okay that is total current in 5 ohm resistance yeah. so you can pause the video and you can refer it down if you want so we'll get to the next question find thevenin's equivalent uh, circuit in for a terminal uh, between a and b for the circuit show so this is your required circuit so we need to find the thevenin's equivalent circuit so here in this circuit uh, name these loops that is x y and uh, uh, in from the terminals from a to b we can name it as vth that is equal to voc here because since we have a dependent source so this would be equal to VOC. So now here, here uh, we can see that 10 equal to 
x minus y because see here this 10 ampere source is separating these two loops right so this corresponds to a super mesh right so we can write it as 10 equal to x minus y because uh, the current direction of this 10 ampere corresponds to the same direction of x here right so we can write it as x minus y but y equal to uh, vx minus 4 right because this this uh, current control current source here that is equal to vx by 4 and this uh, flows in this loop y so we can say that these two currents are equal so this is current actually okay x and y we have named this loop currents okay this is loop current y okay so this is equal to vx by 4 here so but vx equal to 3x here okay since vx equal to 3x because uh, uh, this uh, vx by 4 where this vx uh, is the voltage across this 3 ohm resistance right so voltage across this 3 ohm resistance is given as 3 into the current flowing in this loop that is x so we can write vx equal to 3x so y would be equal to 3x by 4 okay that is y equal to 3 into 40 by 4 that is y equal to 30 here okay we get the value of uh, this y as 30 okay yeah so how it is 40 so here we can see that 10 equal to x minus uh, 3 by 4 x okay we need to apply the loops loop analysis here so for that we get the value of x equal to 40 here okay yeah so now solve it for y and after that uh, solve it for vth that is 5y plus 3x plus uh, 3x 5y is from this loop here y loop and uh, five, uh, value of y here is 30 right so substitute that as 30 and 3x uh, plus 3x that is uh, 6x so 6 into 40 so the final value of vth we are getting it as 390 volt and after that we need to short the terminal a and b in order to find the short circuit current that is isc and again use the required uh, loop analysis here we have written the equations here okay you can refer it down and apply kvl to the super loop here so here we can see that there is a super loop because uh, there is a current source separating these two loops apply that kvl here uh, write it down see we have named this uh, loops as x and y so we have written it as x and y here and after that solve it for these two equations or uh, in the calculator we will be getting these two values for x and y and uh, your total uh, uh, short circuit current is equal to 8.863 amps okay but our uh, goal was to find the RTH that is thevenin resistance that is VTH divided by ISC. VTH we have found it as 390 and ISC is 8.863 therefore RTH we got it as 44 ohms. But our thevenin equivalent circuit is like this. It would be consisting of a uh, thevenin voltage that is VTH along with the equivalent uh, resistance that is RTH. So RTH is 44 ohm and thevenin voltage is 390 volt that would be in series between the terminals A and B. So yeah, this is it. So in the next, uh, we'll go to the next question now. 4A, determine the current through the load resistance in the circuit shown in the figure using Norton's theorem this time, okay? Yeah. In the Norton's theorem, finally in the last circuit, what we, what we should be getting is a current source in parallel with the resistance, okay? In Thevenin's theorem, uh, Thevenin circuit corresponds to a voltage source in series with the resistance. Series resistance, okay? Yeah. So now here we need to ignore this uh, 2 ohm and 10 ohm resistor okay and uh, sh short circuit we need to make short uh, terminal A and B short it and this uh, load resistance would not be there and we can see that ISC is equal to IN that is Norton's current here now. So now apply source transformation in this circuit that is this voltage source in series would be in uh, current source in parallel now okay and solve this we will be getting this circuit. And apply again use the current division rule here isc equal to 0.33 into the resistance of other branch divided by the total resistance that is 3 plus 8 is 11 so we will be getting isc as 0 0.0908 that is the norton's current we know that isc is equal to in right and after that for in order to find the resistance for where and all the sources are there right we need to remove it that is when we remove these two current sources in order to remove current sources we need to open it right so these two branches are there right this and this branch would be eliminated so we would be left with only two resistances in series that is 3 ohm and 8 ohm so we would be getting the final uh, Norton's resistance uh, Rn is equal to 11 ohm and our Norton's equivalent final circuit would be consisting of uh, 
Norton's current along with the Norton resistance that is 0 0.0908 ampere and 11 ohm resistance. But uh, we, need, we needed to find the current through the load resistance in the circuit that is in this uh, load resistance between the terminal A and B we should add that load resistance here 11 ohm but we can see that here we can apply again the uh, current division rule here see current uh, into the current of other branch 11 ohm divided by the total current 11 plus 11 is 22 and solve this and we would be getting the current across the load resistance as 0 0.0454 amps okay so please refer this sum again so the next question is find the value of ZL for which maximum power transfer occurs in the network shown in the figure. So this is a complex network here we can see that consisting of few of the complex terms okay. So here we need to simplify this circuit first that is uh, remove this load and uh, remove this uh, voltage source as well okay. And in order to find the Z equivalent we need to remove all the voltage sources right. So we have removed this voltage source along with this load. And here we can see that this, these are in series, uh, add them that is 3 minus J4 uh, it is parallel with this 10 ohm resistance. Solve that and we would be getting the final Z equivalent as 2.973 minus J into 2.162 where this J corresponds to uh, imaginary term and maximum power will be transferred to the load when uh, the, load the load impedance is equal to the uh, equivalent impedance right so we can say that the final load impedance is equal to the equivalent impedance okay so we need to find the value of zl right so we know that the condition for maximum power transfer occurs when the load impedance is equal to the equivalent impedance we have found out the equivalent impedance that only is your load impedance okay that is 2.973 plus j 2.162 ohms so that's all for 4b this is a simple question so 4C corresponds to, they have given state Milman's theorem, right? So here I have provided you the proof as well, along with the statement. So you can refer it down here. Okay. I'll just adjust it. Yeah. So you can refer this proof here. So this is the statement here. Given. This Milman's theorem is basically in a complex network, they would be giving multiple voltage sources or current sources. We need to convert it into a single voltage source along with the resistance. That's it. Okay, this is very simple, you will understand it. This is for your reference here, this is the statement and this is the formula for Milman's theorem and this is the proof if you want, okay. So yeah, that's all. So you can pause the video and if you want, you can refer it. So that's all for this video. We have discussed all the module 2 solutions. So in the next video, we are going to discuss with the third module. Uh, as well as fourth module okay you know in a single video only so please like share subscribe like, share subscribe and uh, comment down your queries and if you want uh, other stuffs in our uh, channel you can uh, visit it so your upcoming exam max uh, we have created the videos and uh, made a playlist and all all the model question people we have solved it and kept it you can refer it down so again please like share and subscribe and practice well okay thank you